Mr. O'Rourke. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Secretary, I have a number of questions, so I'll, I'll start right into them without uh, making a statement. Um, assuming we needed the, the $5 billion originally that was requested that was appropriated, um, why not ask for a new appropriation? Uh, be because if we really needed that money, then we're not going to fund something that you thought we needed. Uh, if we didn't really need that money, that brings up some really serious questions and concerns. Why not ask for a new appropriation? I, I think in the fiscal environment that we're in right now, the, the, the sense was that that was going to go nowhere. Just like the original idea of tapping into the $10 billion went nowhere. Yeah. And so, again, this, uh, from our perspective, is the, the least worst alternative that we've got in order to be able to do what we need to do, which is finish the project. Last week, the AP uh, reported that wait times for all intents and purposes have not changed, have not improved. There was a story in each one of our districts in El Paso. We were second and third in the state for wait times. Like Dr. Rowe, I'm hearing from constituents who still are not able uh, to get in. You visited El Paso, and I thank you for that. You called the conditions in our facility there unacceptable, in your own words. And yet you're going to take money from potentially facilities like those that serve the veterans that I represent. Um, we're going to divert funds that could potentially be used for what I think is a more urgent crisis, which is seeing veterans who have mental health care needs, who have physical care needs, who are not being seen today. That to me is unacceptable. I'd, I'd, I'd be much more inclined to support a new appropriation than to, than to take money from veterans who need to be served in communities like mine and communities like those represented uh, by, by others here. So I wanted to ask you that question and, and make that point. Um, Mr. Caldwell and, and, and Secretary Gibson, I'm not totally sold that the choice is a binary one. Either we fund this to $1.7 billion or we don't fund it and it just is left an empty shell. Are there any other partners that we could work with? I understand that when this was originally envisioned, we were going to work with an academic institution and co-flag, co-brand, co-locate uh, a facility there. Why not explore that today? I mean, if, if I'm only offered those two choices, you know, then, then perhaps we have to fund it. But I, I think there's got to be a more creative solution to this. It's not either or. As part of that process, we've actually engaged a firm to explore a number of different alternatives, including, uh, including partnerships, including identifying other sites, in, in, uh, including um, uh, trying to refurbish the existing facility. Uh, we've got a preliminary analysis back that, that strongly indicates that completing the facility is the optimal choice. And once we get the final of that back, which we expect next week, we'll provide that to the committee uh, so that you've got the opportunity to be able to see that. It, and it includes the option of looking at feeing uh, care out into the community instead of, instead of building a facility. Uh, and and I, I want to associate myself with all of my colleagues who praised your leadership and, and that of Secretary McDonald. I, I can't argue with that. But I also cannot leave it up to your discretion or the discretion of a future secretary um, to make some of these judgments. And so I got to agree with, with my colleague from Colorado when, when he laid out the litany of past construction mistakes at the VA. The VA just should not be in this business. And so I would love your recommendation back to us or the Secretary's recommendation on a dollar amount above which the VA should not be involved in design and construction and only the Corps of Engineers or some other third party. Uh, I'd also like to hear some creative, innovative suggestions about maybe we should no longer be building standalone veterans facilities. Maybe we should be forced to co-locate. If somebody else had skin in this game, there's no way it would have gone to $1.7 billion. Absolutely no way. That could have been a public partner, a private partner. They would not have allowed this to happen. The VA will do this because the VA has always done this. So I, I no longer trust the VA. It is not that I do not trust you. I do not trust the VA's ability to construct these facilities. In El Paso, with 80,000 veterans very poorly served in an inadequate facility with very long wait times, it's very hard for me to go forward without you coming back or this committee deciding on some very bold, honest changes to this system. And those that have been offered to date 
do not meet that mark. And I'm with my colleague from Minnesota. This one is on us. The first 800 million was on you. This 800 million is on me. Any future overruns are on me. I will not allow that to happen. So I would love to work with you constructively, hear your ideas on how we do something a little bit more bold, uh, make some more significant changes, acknowledge that we should not be in this business, and then I think we can work together. And I think there are some creative solutions to this that are out there, and look forward to working with you on that. Yes, Mr. Sir. Chair, I yield back.